Now, a coalition of universities have joined hands to make emergency ventilators that will work without electricity. The Northwest University is among the team. It's also making and distributing face shields for health workers in and around Porchestrom. Associate Professor Linda Grobler leads the team of engineers, and she joins us on Skype from Porchestrom. Good morning to you. Tell us how this is going to work. Good morning. Since 2019, we started uh, with a plan on working together on, uh, in terms of a national ecosystem of universities focused on the medical device development field to take products from ideation to an, a, a product at the end of the day. And when COVID-19 struck, it just gave us that extra push to start working together um, because before that, we didn't share a common problem to work on. So. Mm. Uh, we have uh, chosen the uh, bird mechanical ventilator, uh, the bird Mark 7 specifically, to focus on and to re-engineer this remarkable piece of equipment that originated in World War II. Uh, so it's from the 1950s. Um, it, is, it only requires um, pressurized air to be able to work and it also can be deployed for both uh, non-invasive and invasive ventilation. So it really is a worthwhile um, piece of equipment to consider. Okay, in layman's terms, and I'm, I'm, uh, it, it's for me here really, uh, what is the difference between what we have at the moment and the way it works to what you are proposing? Okay, now many people haven't been to an ICU before, and if you have been there, you will know that the normal ventilators used these days are very complex, very um, intimidating devices that do a lot of complex electronic um, calculations and it regulates breathing for the patient. Mm. Now, a mechanical ventilator like the one we are investigating uses very simple, uh, a very simple interface. So it's normal nubs that you can turn um, valves that you use to actuate the air and it is not necessarily um, unconceivable jargon that you are confronted with. So it is um, simple, simpler to use, especially since the very big constraining factor in the country at the moment is, is yes, there's a, a, not enough uh, ventilators, but there's also significant uh, um, constraint on the number of trained ICU nurses being able to use those complicated machines. Okay, so it's more simplistic. I assume it's cheaper. How quickly it's, can you churn these out? Well, the great thing is that since we are this uh, collaborative team between the Northwest University the Central University of Technology and the Vol University of Technology, we were able to take these machines that we found uh, still in stores throughout the country, like in at Hreteskir and Tigerberg hospitals, and we were then able to use the national scanning facility at NEXA to do CT scans of the existing parts. So we have complete 3D models at the moment of these um, um, parts mm -hmm. that would normally take months to uh, reverse engineer, we were able to do in weeks. And now um, the, these parts were of, of digital files were then sent to the Central University of Technology. They have the only medically um, safe and regulated 3D printing facility in the country. So now they can 3D print um, the essential parts. And those parts that don't need to be recreated, we can buy as commercial off-the-shelf um, parts. So we can um, manufacture these in a matter of weeks instead of the normal months that it would, would have taken just to get the molds ready to start production. Okay, well, I hope you can start as soon as possible. I believe at the same time you are handing out face masks. Talk us through that. Yes, we have designed and um, have been printing and cutting um, face shields. That is an additional layer of PPE that can be worn by medical staff over their masks um, as an additional layer of protection. Um, many universities throughout the country have been doing this and I think that's really also the, the success of 
providing this since many hobbyists and other universities are assisting in this, we can, in a distributed manner, actually protect the people that serve us. Okay, Linda Grobner, good to talk to you. Thank you.